Arvind Gupta. I am a former professor and head of the Department of Gastroenterology and Medicine. Today, I shall be discussing about one of the commonest disease entities, that is uh, fatty liver. Particularly during uh, this uh, COVID uh, pandemic, there has been an increase in incidence uh, prevalence of fatty liver disease because most of us we chose to sit in our homes uh, during this uh, pandemic just to save ourselves from this uh, dreaded disease. Now the question, common question which is asked by everyone is okay, what is fatty liver? Now see, remember liver is one of the most vital organs in the body. Although it weighs about 1.8 to 2 kg, but it carries innumerable functions, metabolic functions, storage functions, and also it metabolizes so many drugs. Now, the fatty liver, what we call fatty liver is that normally fat is less than 5% of the total liver weight. So, once the percentage of fat increases more to more than 5%, this we call it as a fatty liver. In fact, in the last couple of years, there has been a global epidemic of obesity and so is the increase in incidence of uh, fatty liver disease. Now, people talk about fatty liver disease as if this disease is innocuous or it is harmless. No. See, this uh, fatty liver disease, it exists in two forms. One is that it is a simple fatty liver, a simple stetosis. Now this means that there is a fat in the liver, but this fat is not causing any damage or any inflammation in the liver. But then the most important and the, you know, the concerning entity is NASH, what we call it as a non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. So this means that we have fatty liver, but this fatty liver is associated with inflammation. Now this inflammation can lead to cell death and cell death will eventually lead to fibrosis, cirrhosis and few of the small percentage of the cirrhotics are going to develop a hepatic cell or carcinoma. Now what is anticipated is that in next five years, the way we there is increase in prevalence of fatty liver disease, in next five years, over 40% of the hospital beds are likely to be filled with you know, uh, liver disease patients and particularly NASH related cirrhosis, liver and its complications. Now, uh, this, uh, if you talk of the incidence, see, it all depends upon the dietary habits and then there is the genetic predisposition. Diets, almost 70% of the diet, if they have uh, fatty liver, acidic fatty liver. Patients with pre diabetes they also have a very high incidence of fatty liver disease. In uh, north of India, we have about 50 to 70 percent of the <coughs> diabetics who go <coughs> who have fatty livers. Now, if you talk of uh, overall incidence in India, so this is uh, to the tune of about uh, 30 to 32 percent, and globally it is around 25 percent. So this means at any given time, one in four or one in three have fatty liver. Now the concern is that what I have already discussed with you is that this fatty liver can be simple fatty liver, can be associated with inflammation, and this inflammation can progress to fibrosis, cirrhosis, and some of the cirrhotics may land in hepatocellular carcinoma. The question is, uh, is it preventable? that I will come to in my, you know, uh, further uh, discussion. <coughs> now, the major problem in fatty liver is that it hardly causes any symptoms. Particularly in the initial part, there are hardly any symptoms. The sim if at all the symptoms are there, they are very vague symptoms. Like for example, fatigue, tiredness, some of the patients may have loss of appetite. Then there is pain in the right upper abdomen, what we call it as the right hypochondrium. And very rarely, very, very rarely, 
patient may have uh, jaundice, particularly in the later stages. But once you know the patient becomes cirrhotic, they have uh, they can have all the features of cirrhosis, like uh, you know they can have leg edema, they can have fluid in the abdomen, what we call it as ascites, they can have uh, GI bleeding, they can have uh, encephalopathy, they can have coagulopathy, and uh, so all complications of cirrhosis can be seen in them. It's very easy to uh, you know control this disease, particularly in the early stage. See, number one is that uh, if we talk of the causes, the one of the common causes is the obesity. So, the concern is that in the last uh, decade or so, there has been a global epidemic of obesity. More concern is that even the children, you know, in children, the obesity has increased globally. Now, almost 7 to 9 percent of children, they are either overweight or they are, or they are obese. During this uh, pandemic, uh, you know, uh, because uh, many of the children, they are not going to the school, they are not playing, you know, there is hardly any activity within the home. So, the incidence are further increased by 2 to 3 percent. So, one is that obesity is one of the very important uh, condition uh, which predisposes to fatty liver. But then, in addition, you know, there may be some genetic factors like dyslipidemia high level of triglyceride, high level of LDL, and low level of HDL. Diabetes, as I have already uh, spoken, that it is one of the important uh, cause. Uh, almost 70% of the diabetes they have fatty liver. But then, in addition, we have uh, you know certain drugs, you know. And mind you, one thing that I am talking of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It's not alcoholic uh, because uh, another cause of fatty liver disease is alcohol. So we are not discussing alcohol here. So, uh, you know, uh, so obesity, dyslipidemia, you know, uh, diabetes, they are one of the important causes of fatty liver, along with, uh, you know, other conditions like, uh, you know, you know, which can cause fatty liver, like for example, some of the drugs can cause fatty liver. The PCOD is associated with fatty liver, and there are other metabolic conditions which are associated with fatty liver. Even hepatitis C, is, there is, you know, there is a, a more propensity in uh, you know patients who have uh, you know propensity to have fatty. Another important condition is metabolic syndrome. The metabolic syndrome, you know, it has uh, you know different components like uh, you know increase in weight, or increase in systolic blood pressure. In glucose intolerance, and then uh, you know high levels of triglyceride, uh, hyperglycemia. So the, there is a high incidence of uh, fatty liver in uh, metabolic syndrome. Now uh, see how to investigate. See, in, most of the time it is an incidental detection. You know during a routine lab parameter, a routine lab investigation. Or person goes to doctor for some different reason and doctor examines the patient and finds that this patient has fatty liver. Now once uh, you see a doctor diagnoses uh, the patient uh, to be suffering from fatty liver, or once uh, you know abnormal parameters are there, then you know do require investigations. Now investigations are simple, they are affordable, and they are available almost in every corner of the country. The simplest investigation is, you know, what one goes through is ultrasound examination. Ultrasound can very well, uh, you know, uh, see, uh, you know, detect the size of the liver, the quantum of fat, and then it is categorized as, you know, fatty liver grade one, grade two, grade three, uh, less than thirty uh, percent, thirty to sixty percent, and more than sixty percent. That is how the grading is done, and ultrasound can. Further tell us about uh, you know if patient has uh, you know in addition to has cirrhosis or cir associated complications of cirrhosis. Now uh, if you go with the lab parameters, uh, one of the most important lab parameters is liver enzymes, particularly ALT AST. You know the elevation works. You find elevation, you need to investigate. Now, your lipid profile is very necessary. You know, uh, these patients invariably have high triglyceride, high LDL, low HDL, and then high levels of VLDL, right? And 
other one needs to exclude other causes of uh, you know uh, chronicity or you know, liver fibrosis and cirrhosis. See, for example, hepatitis B, hepatitis C. One needs to exclude uh, certain metabolic causes like uh, hemochromatosis, Wilson disease, and there are so many other conditions uh, you know which are. Other uh, investigations, uh, you know, these two investigations will uh, you know sort out uh, the problem in about 90 to 95 percent of the patients. But then, in some subset of patients, you will one may go ahead with CT scan or MRI. But the most important investigation, which is available almost in every city nowadays, is uh, fibro scan of the liver. It can detect about uh, see whether patient has simple fatty liver or patient has associated fibrosis. Now, uh, this is very, very important because then again, fibrosis, even you know, there are different stages of fibrosis F1, F2, F3, F4. I'm not going to dwell in details here. But once uh, one has fibrosis, this fibrosis is a precursor of cirrhosis. So, ultimately, fibrosis will lead up to cirrhosis. Right? So, um, once patient has cirrhosis, then patient, you know, uh, the investigations uh, required are endoscopy. And uh, you know other investigations which are related to the uh, you know cirrhosis. Now uh, coming on to the uh, management, of see uh, fatty liver management is uh, you know basically a lifestyle modification. So you want to try to maintain a ideal weight. Want to try to keep BMI less than twenty five. And uh, the other thing is, okay, like uh, you know, uh, exercise is very important. Uh, one needs to have uh, you know exercise at least a physical activity of at least twenty to thirty minutes a day for at least five days a week. Diet is very important. One should have a healthy diet which consists of uh, a diet which is rich in fiber, less in carbohydrates, and uh, you know the diet should contain more of uh, you know the fat should be the source of fat should be monounsaturated fatty acids See, for example something like olive oil or something like uh, sunflower oil or soya oil so these are healthy oils apart from uh, you know this one should uh, take a uh, lot of uh, fresh fruits so vegetables but one should mind that uh, all those fruits which are high in uh, you know, uh, fructose or high in sugar, they should be avoided. Uh, exercise uh, is very, very important. It is not necessary that uh, one should go ahead with vigorous exercise, but simple walk of uh, two to three kilometers, uh, three to four kilometers a day in the morning and in, in the evening. Or if you suppose somebody has an arthritic problem and one is unable to walk, even the stretching exercises. Cycling that can do a lot more to such patients. Now, uh, coming to the drug treatment, see, uh, practically uh, once you have NASH, there is no cure. There are various drugs, but see, all these drugs mm -hmm. have uh, you know uh, different uh, range of efficacy, and no single drug is you know, a cure for this uh, disease. Now, uh, the question is that, uh, you know, uh, many of the time the, uh, people ask that I do not have any problem, it is just a fatty liver. So should it uh, be treated? I will say yes. It's not necessary that uh, you take drug, but it is necessary that you know your uh, risk factor for fatty liver. See, for example, to try to bring your weight to normal weight, your BMI should be normal in the normal range, and your if you have dyslipidemia, dyslipidemia needs correction, and uh, you know the normal lipid profile will be ideal in such patient. See if uh, lifestyle modifications are done, so like many of these patients settle by their own, there no additional treatment is required. So second question is uh, like uh, you know uh, what next to be done in these patients. See, once you have fatty liver, you keep uh, your uh, you know uh, liver parameters uh, 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 investigated every three months, 
and uh, the endeavor should be that uh, you know to reduce inflammation. To reduce inflammation, you have to reduce your weight, you have to reduce the aggressive factor, you have to reduce blood fat, and, and then you have to take uh, these drugs which I have already mentioned. Thank you very much.